Over the past five decades, we have been able to peel off layers of mysteries that are hidden within the imposing depths of space. Every other day, there is always a new discovery that rewrites our understanding of space. However, one incident that has defied explanation from even the best of scientists is the ill-fated 1971 Soyuz 11 spacecraft. This eerie event is one for the history books because scientists can't still fathom how a manned spacecraft would leave for space and return back with dead bodies. Who are these three cosmonauts that made history by being the first cosmonauts to die in space? What mysterious assassin or event caused the death of these brave cosmonauts that dared to explore the deep hordes of space? Join us in today's video as we discuss the explosive story of how this rocket just landed with three skeletons on board. Although space might appear silent from where we stand back on Earth, we shouldn't be deceived by this facade. The world between our stars holds many mysterious secrets that could send chills down our spines. Some of these eerie secrets have eluded us for years, while some have managed to slip into our ears thanks to nature's benevolence. One of such weird incidents recorded in space centers around the ill-fated Soviet spacecraft Soyuz 11. On the 6th of June, 1971, the Soviets launched a one-of-a-kind spacecraft amidst fanfare. But their joy was soon extinguished and turned into sorrow when this famous spacecraft vanished. One moment, scientists on Earth could monitor its activities, and the next moment, the spacecraft had vanished into the vast abyss of space history never to be heard of again until recently when the annals were reopened, because it was one mystery that still keeps many awake at night. This shocking incident has kept scientists on a chokehold as they struggle with the several unanswered questions, begging for attention. They still can't fathom how a spacecraft that traveled to space safely would return as a metallic coffin for some of the bravest souls ever in human history. When the Soviets began building Soyuz 11 in the twilight of the 1960s, little did they know that the ship's metallic frame would one day serve as a coffin for some of its finest cosmonauts. What scientists had planned to be a technological triumph for the Soviet people ended up being a technological trauma that continues to haunt the nation till this day. The global scientific community has been forced into a PTSD phase ever since the shocking event occurred. The launch of Soyuz 11, where it all began. One of the blessings of the Cold War between the United States and Soviet Union was that it birthed the space race. Both nations were constantly racing to outdo each other when it comes to space research and travel. This rivalry was what birthed the Soyuz 11 mission. On June 6, 1971, Soviet scientists could barely hold their excitement as they watched in awe a technological masterpiece bid farewell to the Earth and sailed for the mysterious portals of space. The scientists had patted themselves on the back as they received congratulatory messages from their colleagues from other nations. Thanks to Soyuz 11, the scientists and Soviet Union at large had achieved the first of many space milestones. It was hard to keep the excitement down, especially when we consider the fact that they were literally writing their names in the annals of history, never to be forgotten. The Soyuz 11 mission was the first time a crewed spacecraft would dock with the world's first space station, Salyut 1. To cap it up, the plan was for the crew to spend nearly a month at the space station, exceeding the usual duration spent by manned spacecraft. The world had seen nothing like this before. Soyuz 11 was testament of the beauty that Soviet engineering could produce. From its sleek design to being manned by a three-man crew, this famous space mission had etched its name in chronicles of space travel long before it left the surface of our planet. Little did we know that the spacecraft would become more famous in the history books, albeit for an unpleasant reason. The spacecraft was characterized by a spherical descent module and a cylindrical orbital module, standing as witnesses of the Soviets' desire to open up new frontiers in space exploration. The Soviets had entrusted this heroic mandate to three daring cosmonauts, Georgi Dobrovolsky, Vladislav Volkov, and Viktor Patsayev. They were men who had proven by their several months of preparation that they were ready to fly the Soviet flag high in the windy waves of space. 
Like emissaries sent to visit a foreign nation, the men had embarked on this glowing mission that ended up as a sad tale. Their ascent into the skies and the beckoning roots of the space between stars left smiles on the faces of onlookers and caused pride to swell in their hearts. They were not just making Soviets proud, but the global scientific community, T. Large. The historic journey saw them travel several miles towards the Salyut 1, adhering to the prescribed orbit and keeping regular tabs with ground support back on Earth. They finally made it to the promised land and docked with the space station, amidst a resounding applause from the scientists and engineers back on Earth. The excitement from the successful docking of the spacecraft was so out of this world that even the Kremlin received congratulatory calls from the governments of other nations. Up until that historic moment, a manned spacecraft had never docked with an orbital space station. The event was the product of the Soviets' years of hard work and proof that anything was possible if you dared to dream and meticulous plan towards it. As the world watched the event unfold, the cosmonauts wasted no time in commencing the assignment that had made them leave the comfort of their homes for adventurous waters of space. The Salyut space station was their new home, at least for the time being. They began working on the tasks in their schedule in order to pave way for future space exploration. By staying aboard the space station, the cosmonauts were able to monitor effects of prolonged space exposure on the human body. They were performing scientific tests and experiments that were expected to unlock new doors in our understanding of space. From their communication with scientists back on Earth, it was evident from the cosmonauts' voices that were uncovering new insights in our knowledge of what goes on in space. We could literally see the pulsating wave of excitement coming from their voices as they discussed their work and what had been discovered so far. Living aboard Salyut 1, an intriguing perspective from the cosmonauts' space travel was that they gave us a more vivid picture of the Earth compared to what we had with us earlier. They painted a picture of a beautiful world with the glowing words used to describe our planet's look. According to the cosmonauts, the Earth is a radiant blue orb suspended in the cosmic dark that would only evoke nothing short of amazement from onlookers. If the men were for a minute unhappy about the stark isolation their stay in Salyut 1 caused them, it never showed in their communication. Instead, they filled scientists with details of spectacular scenes amidst the dark infinity of space. From their living quarters aboard Salyut 1, they had a good glimpse of the distant stars that adorned space. They were not discouraged by the fact that they were far removed from the comfortability of our world and were now forced to live within the metallic confines of the space station. The men's minds were more focused on achieving their individual times given the strict timeline they were working with. For instance, Gorgi Dobrovolsky was the mission's commander and oversaw the crew's work while aboard Salyut 1. The heavy task of ensuring that the spacecraft was functioning well and communication was maintained with the ground team rested on Dobrovolsky's shoulders. In contrast, Viktor Patsyev was the flight engineer and was tasked with managing the mission's numerous scientific experiments, including those related with medical and biological studies. Likewise, Vladislav Volkov was the flight engineer and resident space veteran. This wasn't Volkov's first space mission because he had prior experience aboard Soyuz 7. However, for this space mission, he was the chief conductor of onboard operations and maintenance. The cosmonauts lived up to their training by adhering to a strict work routine assigned to them. They mostly worked on maintenance of the spacecraft, performing planned experiments, recording observations, and made scheduled communications with scientists on the other side of the space corridor. It was evident from the men's daily routine that they were epitome of Soviet excellence. Despite the discomforting living conditions aboard Salyut 1, they continued to execute their routine tasks. They embodied the unbroken Soviet spirit as they exuded joy while performing their tasks. The camaraderie that flowed between the cosmonauts was out of this world as they kept the ground team abreast of the happenings in the space station. Every moment they communicated with the team of scientists back on Earth, we could see the intense happiness in their voice. An eventful moment in the cosmonauts' stay on Salyut 1 was when they played chess, evoking excitement across the globe. They were the first crew to do so in space, and the game was broadcast to millions back on Earth. 
Ravaged by a stilling isolation and the lack of privacy aboard the space station, the cosmonauts were unflinching in their resolve to achieve the objectives of this mission. Almost every other day, they were presented with a new set of challenges that threatened to dampen their spirit. However, the crew had their eyes set on a more lofty goal and succeeded in scaling over the high walls of these challenges. For instance, they had to learn to maneuver their bodies in microgravity. Back on Earth, this was a piece of cake for the cosmonauts, but aboard the Salyut 1, it was a different ball game. The absence of gravity in space made the crew's movement much more difficult. It was almost like they were learning to move their bodies from scratch. Under this peculiar state, the crew were forced to adapt to new conditions as they eat, drank, and performed personal hygiene. In the midst of these challenges, the crew kept unlocking captivating views of the Earth from where they were holed up in space. In one of their messages with the ground team, Dobrovolsky had described a sunrise from orbit as a ring of bright orange light spreading its rays upon the Earth. The breathtaking views of the Earth from this vantage point made the crew homesick in no time. Nevertheless, they persevered in accomplishing the tasks on their desks. Everything was going according to plan, and the men couldn't wait to return back to Earth to be with their families. However, what the crew had never envisioned was that their space exploration journey, which had been smooth up till that point, was about to detour towards a tragic route. The Unexpected Disaster while the ground team on Earth kept observing in awe at the rich knowledge of space that this mission had unearthed, something hideous was cooking silently back in space. And regrettably, the victims of this dreadful moment in history would end up being the crew members of Soyuz 11. Although it's been 52 years since this disheartening calamity befell the scientific community, it is hard not to flip back to this moment when skimming through the history books. The crew had spent 23 days living and breaking their backs with work aboard Salyut 1. However, little did they know that all their dreams of returning home in one piece was about to be shattered into pieces, never to be glued together. Nothing had forewarned them that fate had destined that they would be the main characters in one of the most heartbreaking space exploration stories. Their innocent minds were oblivious to the stealthy, ill-fated event that would jump on them like a desperate mugger at night. Months later, when scientists poked at the different ends of this event to uncover what went wrong, all the accusing fingers pointed at a silent, easy-to-miss error. On the 30th of June, 1971, the crew's work at the space station had come to an end. It was finally time to go home, as Soyuz 11's sojourn in space was coming to a quick end. The crew boarded their spacecraft armed with scientific specimens, films, tapes, and other gear, and headed for home, engulfed by the excitement of having had a successful exploration experience. They couldn't wait to arrive back on Earth, specifically in the Soviet Union, and fill their colleagues and scientists in on the observations and discoveries they made while in space. As soon as the undocking process from the space station was initiated, the spacecraft separated into two modules, the orbital module and the descent module. The orbital module was where the cosmonauts had lived and worked for over three weeks, while the descent module was designed to endure the heat of re-entry and bring the crew safely back to Mother Earth. However, things went haywire during this separation process. What should have been a seamless process turned out to be one of the most tragic events in the history of space travel. The opening scene of this sad story began when a cabin vent valve on the descent module experienced a fault out of the blues, this valve malfunctioned by opening prematurely when the two valves were separated. This mechanical error went unseen by the crew, but its effect was damaging, catching the cosmonauts unaware. Like an assassin on an assignment, the effect of this malfunction was subtle in its movement, as it caused the cabin's atmosphere to vent out into the void of space. Without preparedness, the crew were subjected to the harsh reality of vacuum. Such rapid depressurization was fatal. Within seconds, the cabin became empty of air, and in that moment, Death walked into the room to be with the cosmonauts. It was too late for them to put up a fight. Death had come calling, and there was no way of escape. The men would have lost consciousness due to lack of oxygen, and which is known as a condition called hypoxia. When the Soviets designed this spacecraft, 
they hadn't anticipated this flaw to ever occur, much less losing their cosmonauts to the cold hands of death in this manner. This event was totally unforeseen, striking everyone by surprise, so it meant that the cosmonauts weren't prepared to deal with the situation. There is no part of their training that equipped the crew for an event of this manner. Frankly speaking, they were sitting ducks to an oncoming gunfire, whose direction they didn't know of. To make matters worse, they had no spacesuits during the re-entry process, which was a standard practice at that time due to space and weight constraints within the descent module. The decision to align with this standard practice was what sealed the final nail to their coffins. The lack of spacesuits meant that the men were defenseless against the rapid depressurization that befell them. What ensued was a deafening silence that overshadowed the once consistent communication between the crew and ground team. Once this lack of communication settled in, the ground team knew without a doubt that something was amiss. However, they were still not certain about what was wrong, much less the gravity of the situation. This is because communication disruptions weren't a novel event when it comes to space travel. Oftentimes, these break-in communication between the crew and ground control usually occur. So, the Soviets thought it was one of those days. If only they knew that they were so wrong to think that way. The reality of what happened would only dawn on the ground control after Soyuz 11 landed on Earth and the recovery team sent to rendezvous with the crew got the shock of their lives. The happiness the recovery team felt at the safe return of the spacecraft instantly vanished when they discovered that the crew were dead. They couldn't believe their eyes as they stared, with tears in their eyes at the lifeless bodies of the crew. It so happened that Soyuz 11 automatic systems had landed the craft 90 kilometers southwest of Karajan in Kazakhstan. From all standards, it was a normal return to the Earth. Nothing seemed amiss to the recovery team that had been sent ahead to the location. According to official reports, there was no outward damage whatsoever on the craft, so it would have never crossed the team's mind that something evil had befallen their adventurous cosmonauts. The recovery team had knocked on the side of the craft, expecting a response from the occupants, but it was pitch silence. This was strange, they thought to themselves at the realization that something strange was on the brink of being let loose. Having received no response from the cosmonauts, the recovery team decided to open the hatch and they were met with a chilling sight that traumatized them for years. Staring back at them were the cold faces of the dead crew. None of them appeared alive. The three men were in their couches, sitting motionless with dark blue patches on their faces and trails of blood from their blood. With shaky hands, they moved the men out of the descent module and laid them on the ground. Dobrovolsky was still warm. The doctors present wasted no time in administering artificial respiration, but it was an effort that was dead on arrival. The men were dead and had long crossed over to the afterlife, if it did exist. Several days later, after official reports were made, it was stated that the cause of death was suffocation. As news of this horrific event filtered across the globe, the world was held spellbound in shock, and scientists pondered on what could have led to the men's demise. It's so sad that their heroic conquest in space ended as a tragedy in the annals of history. Who would have imagined that the brave souls who happily dared to go explore space on our behalf would return back as corpses? Nevertheless, Tears and tributes poured in celebration of the lives of the heroic three who made history by helping the Soviets achieve many firsts in just one space visit. We can't help but celebrate the courage of these resilient cosmonauts, whose triumphant return to the Earth was truncated by the unfortunate flaw in the descent module. This event served as a reminder to the world of the immense risk that astronauts and cosmonauts alike have woven around their necks in bid to unearth new space discoveries. The unfortunate incident was the wake-up call that we needed to appreciate these space explorers the most for choosing to sojourn beyond the confinement of our planet and unlock mysteries about space, something that the average man is not equipped to achieve. The aftermath of a tragic homecoming, the arrival of the Soyuz 11 had been planned with fanfare. The Soviets had rolled out plans in preparation for the astronauts' return they were set to blow their trumpets loud for the world to hear as they celebrated their recent space achievements. The crew had journeyed to space 
to achieve goals that have eluded the global scientific community for years, so it was only fair that they received a hero's welcome. At the sight of the crew's lifeless silence, a deafening silence enveloped the Soviet scientific community. Heads and shoulders dropped in sadness as scientists and cosmonauts mourned the deaths of the departed men. The Soviet authorities weren't left out, offering the state's condolences to the families of the deceased men. After autopsies had been carried out on the men's bodies to ascertain the cause of death, they were given a large state funeral by the government. They were buried in the Kremlin Wall Necropolis at Red Square, Moscow, near the remains of another famous cosmonaut, Yuri Gagarin. In recognition of their service to the Soviet state, the men were each posthumously awarded the Hero of the Soviet Union Medal. Condolences poured in for the Soviets from across the globe, including an official statement from the United States President Richard Nixon, offering sympathies on behalf of the American people to the Soviet Union. As the Soviets bathed in the showers of these condolences, they set their eyes on a new task. That was beckoning for their attention. Something had to be done to the Soyuz spacecraft, which from the look of things was still in good condition. After weeks of deliberations, the Soviets decided to redesign the Soyuz 11 craft. The spacecraft underwent extensive redesign, which saw a change in its carrying capacity. It could only carry two cosmonauts at a time. The extra room created was to allow the crew to wear so-called spacesuits during launch and landing. From the memorial monument, erected for the crew at the landing site in Kazakhstan, to craters on the moon that were named after the three men, the world will continue to be in awe of the exploits of Georgi Dobrovolsky, Vladislav Volkov, and Viktor Patsayev. Thanks for watching this video till the end. For more exhilarating space discoveries, click the next video on the screen.